You know what they you know what they say? <laughs> what do they say? <laughs> they say not to talk politics. Oh, here we go. Why do they say that though? Because I always tell people like I, I'm happy to talk politics. People say don't talk religion and don't talk politics. And I'm always of the opinion you could change my mind. I don't know it all. And so people get super polarized, like Mm -hmm. Oh, you're wrong, and you don't know what you're talking about. But then they lack um, they lack any insight that isn't from TV, right? And so I want to be careful yep. when we're talking about what candidate would be better for the industry. That it isn't about um, you know, oh, they're going to take your guns or whatever the latest little fear factor is. Right. And we're talking about actual business. What's better for the industry? Not which candidate do we like more? That makes sense. You know, and my answers are probably going to surprise you a little bit because I'm sure everybody who's heard me on this show probably feels... You being for Trump does not surprise me one bit. No, I... What, do you want me to answer the question as far yeah, as... Yeah, so who's who's better, Biden or Trump, for our industry? Transportation. Uh, I believe that Biden will be better for our industry. See, I told you. Shocker. You heard it here first. When, when, did, when did you decide on this? A couple hours ago. As I was processing through, you know, in our pre-shoot meeting that we go through. It, but a couple things. I think one thing with Trump, and the word is chaos. And yes, the economy is probably going to take off again. And he'll take us to places we've never been. But I think there's a lot of fear based around him getting reelected from the masses. And I think when I look back at, you know, Clinton's um, tenure, Obama's tenure, although they were not my candidates or my choice, they had very stable economic models in place. And I think that it might be better, you know, Biden may be better for our industry. <laughs> Silence. Wow. Is this my last show with you guys? Like, did I just get fired? No, like I, uh, Jeremy, I don't, I don't think that po politics aren't polarizing for me. I think it, I think it's, um, it's ridiculous that anybody would be so polarized that they think they're in the White House. They're briefed by the CIA. They know everything that's going on. But when it comes to politics, we know what they let us know. But you go back and read old CIA or. Just go back and right. watch the documentary on Obama in the last year, and they talk about how they managed what we knew, mm -hmm. right? And so I think that these sort of things are way easier looking back four years from now than they are right now because of decisions course. now are made emotionally. Yeah. And... Uh, so there's not there's nothing you I, could say about that that would. That I'm would, just curious why we only have two choices. Well, that's my point. Right. Neither I mean, one yeah. of the choices represent how I feel. I, I would agree with that. Okay. What do you think, Christian? Well, I think the a couple of things with this. One is, uh, I wouldn't say that I'm educated enough on politics to be able to have like a really really good discussion with somebody about it, and that's probably on purpose, but the other thing I would say is that our industry is so beautiful that when I think back to my first, uh, back Are in the 90s. Are you describe our industry like a, like a hot chick? I might. <sighs> you never know. But uh, when I think back to the 90s when I first so got beautiful. into the industry and that, that first month where I sold a bunch of cars because I had no idea what I was doing, I don't remember getting that first paycheck and saying, thank God, Slick Willie, I couldn't have done this without you, right? Like, so the president of the United States- Slick is, Willie being Bill Clinton. Yeah, okay. so, so the president of the United States- That's never, the interpret for the audience. Yeah. Slick <laughs> thank Willie. you, everyone's back. But um, yeah, the president has never determined my paycheck. And I think that's the beautiful thing about our industry is no matter who's running it, there's so much opportunity for success that it doesn't really matter to me who's president because I know that we can be successful either way. Yeah. So I, like I think that. that that's kind of like my thing. We can only do politics. what we can control, right? Mm -hmm. it, so we, much. Can, we can control the customer experience. We can control our attitude, how hard we work, our focus. Our adaptability. Yep, our adaptability. That's a good one. Yeah. But... I really feel, especially living in California, that I have any effect on the presidential race whatsoever. Because it's going to vote Democrat. It yeah. doesn't. 
-hmm. It doesn't matter. I I will say living here in in Los Angeles in California that the Democrats running this state are terrible leaders. Terrible leaders. Something I don't know. I'm sure in history it's happened before, but in my lifetime I've never experienced leadership so bad and so blind. Like it, it's it's insane what's happening down here. Crime is rising. It's people are looting. It's it's um, you know the rest of the country and even our friends north of the border in Canada absolutely just laugh at California. And it's I you go back to when we elected Schwarzenegger as our governor, and then you know put Jerry Brown back in office, and I mean all it's it's crazy. There there is no help for California. And, I look at like what we've gone through with our kids at school right now, the amount of money our schools have wasted in programs that are designed to help people that have really no effect. And it's, I'm sure it's billions of dollars. And you know, that, that's the interesting part of, okay, socially do we take care of everybody? And then capitalists, which is, okay, well, let's do it, let's help, but let's be profitable when we do it as well, right? So it's very interesting that, that you say that. And yeah, I, I I noticed that you know outside on the bridge here, the homeless actually are starting to build houses. There's lumber hanging over the freeway from the tent city. Yeah, out there. have you have you it's heard crazy. of that book? Um, What's going on in Kansas? I think it's called. Hmm. No, it's a great book about how you the Republican Party doesn't represent the people that actually vote Republican, and kind of the same thing. Hmm. Like people, like say for example, people in my family would vote Republican because they're diehard Christians. But the Republican policies don't help them whatsoever because they're blue collar, you know, working in the government sort of thing. And the, the thing with politics nowadays, and I've experienced it firsthand, watching uh, people that I know and that are friends lobby and get laws passed that most of what's happening in government doesn't represent the people. It It's big money. Like the PACs oh, yeah. and all that, it, it, it's huge money. And those, if you want to be a senator or a congressman, you, you have to play to that. And so you're not really representing the people that vote for you very much, if at all. And I, I personally think the fix is you have to get rid of all of those packs and you have to limit, if you limited what people could donate to what, you know, actually was, you know, cap people at a thousand and you didn't allow any of those packs and they're anonymous too. Like you don't know who's in those right. packs, mm -hmm. right? So if you eliminated those, then the money that was raised would be more in line with what the people actually believe. Mm -hmm. And you have more of a voice, but I think most of the people don't have a voice today, because well, it's it's I driven by by the commerce and the big companies. And and I mean, go back to the founding fathers. What if government went back to serving, where senators and congressmen didn't get paid? What if they had to earn their living out in the real world, and they just served their time? You wouldn't have people sitting in Congress for twenty and thirty years. You'd have them go in, do their service, fix things, and then go back to work. And it would be a government, you know, of the people, for the people, by the people, however they say that. That sounded really good. Yeah, also the thing, too, with, like, uh, the police and all that, like, defund the police. Like, the police need more training and more resources. You well, need more police. And you need to train them better. Like, they need to, I don't know, what do you think a police, a police person, man or woman, should do in training a year? Oh, like, I mean, what they should do? Yeah. Uh, 120 hours a year? What do you think they do? Um, eight? I, I don't know. Yeah, it's like a week. Yeah. Something like that. So depending. maybe 40? Well, in, I heard Jocko talk about it. And he, he was proposing every fifth day. I, I think that's good. I, oh, that's, a, that's actually really good. That's 20%. Yeah, and, of the and work. you know, the path we're going down is anarchy in the streets. And it, it's really scary when you think about the and i i i i've got to be very careful i'm not going to be careful with what i say um but if you defund the police who's going to control the masses and 
who's going to, you know, we deal with it every day at our shop. We're, in a, we're not in the best area. Well, you know, there's drug, drug addicts, there's homeless, and there's really not a strong police presence in our area. And when you take that away, and if crime starts to become rampant, then there's gonna be a time where people stand up and say enough is enough, and they're gonna take the law into their own hands. And people are definitely gonna get hurt when that happens, so I, yeah, and then there's no system for it. There's no, right, and that's yeah. that's the part yeah. that scares me. So I so think that's the 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 part about Biden that scares me is he placates to that far left because that's his, you know. That's but do you his think side. that's that's more campaigning where he has to go there now to get elected? So he he's going to go as far to that side as he can. But the reality of it is, if he's in office, is that actually ever going to take place? I mean, there's never been a politician that said one thing before the election and went and did the exact yeah. opposite afterwards, right? No, That's once, politics ever. 101. It's interesting that that's your take on it. You know, I'd be curious, too, what our audience thinks. And, um, you know, if you're so polarized that, that you can't have a discussion about this, please don't comment because I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for a right. real discussion and something articulate and thought out. But I'd be curious what, what you guys think. I, I personally believe, I think at the end of the day, I would lean more Trump. Like I said, neither one represent me, but I think Trump's more pro-business and more about the police and law and order. Um, I like what he said. Focus on what you can control and realize that whoever does get put into office is not really going to have a huge effect on your outcome it's your actions and what you do with the tools in front of you that yeah and what you happen. said to adaptability mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ends up being the most important yeah I i'd be curious though post in the comments and let us know how you feel maybe we'll talk about this again if somebody says something articulate thank you so much for watching this clip of service drive revolution now you can catch the full episode on youtube itunes or spotify or wherever you consume your podcast. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post new episodes. I'm Chris Collins and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Chris Bulldog Collins. And I'll see you again on the next episode.